Welcome back to California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Our guest today is Michael Spezio. He is a professor at Scripps College. You want to listen to this interview. It will be fascinating. He is one that looks at political psychology. Is that the best way to say that it? That is a really good way to say it. And yes. what he has done is he has done extensive studies on physical appearance and how physical appearance impacts voters. And I'm just so glad you're here. I can't wait to well, get thanks, into bro. it. That's so great. let's talk most generally about your studies and what you were looking at. Okay, well, we have um, in the United States a desire to have a deliberative democracy in which people make decisions based on informed choices where they know the issues and they're choosing the people to best represent them on those issues. It's a great aspiration. I'm for it. I think everyone's for it. Can I just tell you, I'm laughing at myself because I think about the fact I'll be watching television and I'll see a Politico talk and I'll say, that's a Democrat. <laughs> that's a Republican. And you know what? Most of the time I'm right. Yeah. Despite my thin skull or thick skull, whatever you want to call it, I almost feel like I can tell. Yeah. That's right, and, and uh, so we want people to be able to tell what, uh, you know, who a person is for, what they stand for, by what they say. Then we have this problem that science has really demonstrated um, since the late 80s, work has shown that in fact our real elections are associated with and strongly influenced by to, um, you know, where it actually matters for a margin of victory uh, by the physical appearance of our political candidates. Let's break it down. When you say physical appearance, what do you mean? Do you mean their head, their face, their body, their clothing, their gender, their race, their ethnicity? That's great. Uh, all great questions. So definitely gender and racial background, ethnicity play a huge role. And what uh, the earliest work in the, in the late 80s uh, showed that when you even control for those things, things like, so the, these use short video clips, these studies, things like posture and gesture with the sound completely off actually allowed people who had no idea about what the candidate stood for allowed people, after viewing a 10-minute video, sound off again, to pick who was most likely going to a win and that and election. And that's the key and why I want to do on the program. It goes almost without saying that, sure, gender, race, ethnicity, that's going to play a role. But these are intangibles. Yes. And they are intangibles that you have been able to show make a difference. Let's start with the head. Yes. What can you tell us about the head, the face? Well, so we know that um, from a series of studies that uh, what you think about a person in terms of how attractive they are um, can make a difference, but only under certain circumstances. Um, and I want to emphasize that these differences are small, um, but they're well above chance level, so that if mm. you were a betting person, you could get you know, 200 people into a room and, and put real races side by side, and get the results from those and go to Vegas and you would make money. But what's interesting about your studies mm -hmm. is you have done analysis where the face is covered. All the person is seeing is really the hair and the jawline. That's right. So it's not just it's not um, facial expressions per se. It's beyond facial expressions. That's right. So when we control, so we published a study in 2008 and again a new study that just came out right. in May of 2012. And when we uh, control for uh, matching um, head size, head position, so direct gaze toward the camera, when we control for race and ethnicity, when we control for gender, so that means each pair sure. is either a man or a, a, a woman pair, um, when we control for all of that, we still see these effects. And then what was Stunning. really shocking for us and this was um, uh, a collaborative project with a student at Scripps College, sure. where I teach. She did this for her senior thesis at Scripps. We ask all of our students to you. do a capstone project. Mm -hmm. And uh, she really got into it. And she, what she did is she obscured the faces. Right. And she left the hair, she left the jawline, and she left the clothing, the posture. These were all still images. And then we uh, displayed these images for all of about a second, side by side. People picked. And they were predictive. And they were predictive. How it important, was amazing. and I say this specifically for men, is a good hair. <laughs> 
or having hair. It, it, it turns out that it's uh, somewhat important if you're um, older, but if you're actually, um, if you're actually, uh, say, age. say middle yeah. age, or if you have an older person who's an incumbent, that can overcome some of that. Uh, Let's that. talk about posture and clothing. Mm -hmm. How important are those two elements? Well, we, we're still, those studies are still ongoing to determine exactly what is contributing and how much uh, a person's cleanliness of clothing and sort of cultural um, norm of clothing, as well as cultural norm of hair and posture, these things are, 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 are ongoing. What's really interesting to me is we thought at one point, even as recently as about a year ago, mm -hmm that it was all down to the face. Mm -hmm. And so politicians didn't have any control over the face they had, right. well, within limits. Within uh, limits, yes. Surgical limits. Yes, of course. Um, but now we are seeing that other aspects over which politicians can exert more control also have a significant effect, which may indicate that our deliberative democracy may not be as much in danger as we thought. That is, um, oh, go ahead. No, please, because it's interesting. I think about the current presidential race, mm -hmm. and in some ways it's become a bit of class warfare. I don't mm -hmm. use that term pejoratively, but you have someone who's being perceived as a patrician versus someone who's being perceived as a man of the people. And I have to think that how they dress, how they do their hair, I mean, that's going to matter. That's Because right. it can play right into that narrative. Yeah. You, our, our research suggests that when you get to a level of the presidency, which so many right. people tune into, that these matters of appearance make some difference still, ah. um, but not as much sure. as when you have much of the voters, um, say, who are uninformed about their senator or their uh, state or federal representative. It's really those voters who walk into the voting booth and they don't it's, really know too it's much. It's funny, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah, but no, I remember ahead. when South Africa had its first election, mm -hmm. they had pictures of the candidates. Bad um, idea. I, I was going to ask you, yeah. because... Beca it's a bad idea because what's, uh, what it does is it allows people a kind of uh, alternative strategy to becoming informed. They huh. think, we all think, and I include myself in this, we all think we can just look at a person's picture and we see their smile, we see how oh, genuine yeah. it is, we see their eyes, we see how um, intense their, their gaze is or so, and we think we have some clear window into how trustworthy they are, how competent they are, how, how deceptive they are. And honestly, that is unfortunately right. uh, not so true. What about stature, height? So height definitely matters, and in our photos, uh, we did not actually play with So you with control that. for it. We control for height. It's real. What we try to do is control for anything except we varied the actual physical appearance with the faces there. And of course, we replicated when, when we did this study in 2008 and again in 2012, we replicated the work that has been done since the late 80s, and it's also cross-cultural. This effect really? has been shown in Mexico. It's been shown in several countries in what Latin about America. What gender? Do Gen men and women yes. see it differently? Uh, so in gender, it's typical that if you don't control for gender, men, when uh, the All people picking uh, don't know anything about the candidates, men do better. And men are usually the reason that men do better. Men are more likely to pick men. <sighs> Women are actually pretty much uh, mostly even on that. Thank you so much for joining us. His name is Michael Spezio. He is a professor at Scripps College. My name is Brad Palmer. Thank you so much for watching California Edition.